Bringing us home today is ABX Group, ASX code ABX. The company is a uniquely positioned high-tech Australian company delivering materials for a cleaner future. Presenting for the company today is Managing Director and CEO, Mark Cooksey. Mark, thanks for your time and over to you. Great, thank you, Abby. Thanks for the introduction and thanks everyone for listening today. So yes, ABX, we're delivering materials for a cleaner future. And ABX has two focus project focus areas. The first of which is creating an ionic absorption clay rare earth project in Northern Tasmania. That's the only one I'm going to cover today in the time we have. The second one is establishing a plant to produce hydrogen fluoride and aluminium fluoride from recycled industrial waste. And that's through our 83% owned subsidiary Alcor. And the third one, which is actually where we began, uh, still a niche business for mining and enhancing, enhancing bauxite resources for the cement, aluminium and fertilizer production industries. I'm just talking about rare earths. So first question you might ask yourself is why should you invest in rare earth production? And it's pretty simple. Simply the demand is going up massively. The graph on the left is illustrative showing how electric vehicles will become dominant in coming decades. And electric vehicles need permanent magnets and permanent magnets need so a few specific rare earths. For example, on the right, uh, dysprosium is a key uh, element, key rare earth element in high performance permanent magnets. And that's one forecast showing the demand you know, growing by more than fivefold in just in just a decade. So there's a huge opportunity for new, a huge uh, necessity for new production. Why should you invest then in ABX rare earths? Um, firstly, metallurgy on the left, we've got a clay hosted deposit, but the metallurgy of different clay hosted deposits varies enormously. What you want is an ionic deposit, which is what ABX has. There's not very many of those. And then you're at the left-hand end of the cost curve there, you know, profitable. As you become less ionic, your production cost goes up a lot and your economic position is a lot worse. And then on the right, a grade, the grade of the dysprosium and terbium, most important of all, because they're the most valuable rare earths. And the graph shows the ABX a grade of dysprosium and terbium is comparable to the, to the highest in the world. Another reason for ABX is location, both the specific location of the resource itself. So it's a, the main resource is on a re recently harvested hardwood plantation at just west of Launceston in Tasmania. And then Australia itself are highly attractive to global customers. Um, you know, for example, North America and Europe uh, East Asia love the idea of getting rare earth supply from Australia. So given these uh, opportunities and advantages for, for ABX, what's our strategy? It's pretty simple. Uh, we aim to uh, get into profitable production of a mixed rare earth carbonate from our resource in Northern Tasmania as fast as possible. The map on the right shows where we're located. So the main resource in the red circle, just to the west of Launceston, and then the concept is we sell that MREC, it's called, the mixed rare earth carbonate, to a third-party refinery that could, for example, North America or Europe or East Asia. And a guiding principle of ABX is we only operate where welcomed. We've been operating in Tasmania a long time, and that's an important philosophy for ABX. So how are we tracking to this objective? So ABX... As I just mentioned, been in Tasmania a long time, been exploring and even mining some bauxite. Uh, over a decade of history in Tasmania, we know the area well. It's only really since 2020 and 2021 that we started looking at rare earths. And then quite rapidly, we've gone from our maiden resource estimate in 2022, our first metallurgical results showing we had an ionic absorption clay, not just a clay hosted deposit. And now our most recent resource estimate in May, and even more importantly, just a couple of weeks ago, signed our first commercial agreement, which is just an MOU with UCOR, which is a leading prospect in North America. And just to expand on that, so UCOR, they, they have currently got a demonstration separation plant in Canada. So that's to take, for example, an MREC and produce separated rare earth oxides. And then they're in the process to plan to build a commercial plant in USA. So we've signed an MOU 
with UCOR to explore both offtake and potential investment by UCOR into the ABX project. We're also engaged with a number of other strategic investors um, who, who have a strategic interest in the rare earth value chain and uh, deep pockets. So we hope we can secure a deal with one or more of those. And also we're heavily engaged with the government. You know, rare earth is a very important part of the critical material strategy. And there's certainly prospects of financial support from the government as they've given to other parties in critical minerals. So our plan, you know, overall, get in production as fast as possible, requires a few things in parallel, securing strategic investment, continuing laboratory and pilot plant metallurgical studies to, to translate what's very promising uh, early results into an actual process for the commercial projects, economic studies to work out the capex and opex, continued customer engagement, and then still a focus on exploration. Uh, we've got a pretty good resource already, but there's certainly prospects to grow that and uh, define the higher grade zones with our, within our existing resource. So with that, I thank you for your time and look forward to answering your questions. Thanks for your presentation, Mark. So we do have a few questions for you. I know you've mentioned this just previously in your presentation, but you mentioned the partnership with UCOR. Could you provide some more details on this? Yeah, so it's quite interesting. Uh, parties like ABX who are looking to establish a mine and then sell an MREC, obviously we need a customer, uh, which is a, a refinery that wants an MREC to produce separated rare earth oxides. UCOR is a very prospective partner because they don't have their own mine, so they need third-party feed from parties such as, as ABX. And the other important element of it is what we're really trying to do is optimise the entire supply chain from our resource through to those separated oxides. So we do a bit of the we do a bit of it and then UCOR does a bit of it. And the approach that UCOR and ABX are taking is to work on that collectively. We're trying to optimise the partnership, not just each part of, of the process chain. Okay, Mark, so from an investor standpoint, what differentiates your rare earth project from others? Yeah, so I tried to cover that earlier. Um, you know, a few things, the the metallurgy is great. The the grade, particularly dysprosium and terbium is very high. And we're in Australia in an attractive location. There's actually, basically, we think we've currently got the only ionic adsorption clay in Australia. So that puts us in a pretty unique position. Great. Thanks, Mark. So what key news flow can we expect to see in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, so it's addressing all the components I talked about advancing the project. So commercially, for example, I'm going to the USA and Canada in about a month to visit the UCOR demonstration plant, meet with trade officials in Washington. So we look forward to updating the market more on our progress commercially. Uh, and then on the technical side, because there's three bits, there's the metallurgical work, there's economic studies, of what the project's gonna look like, and then continuing exploration to make our, what is a decent resource already, even better. Thanks for your time today, Mark, and thank you for your presentation. I hope you have a great weekend. Great, thank you, you too, Abby.